Okay, let's do a Stokes warm up. So, number 9 in 20.2 says calculate the integral over S of curl of F dotted with the area, right? So, what category of thing is this guy? It's yeah, so this is a scalar, right? Oh, which is the result of a flux of a vector field through a surface. Yeah. And the vector field in this case is not F, but the curl of F. Yeah. You guys see that? So this is a surface integral, i.e. flux, right? Okay, and the F that I have, right, the vector field I have, not the vector field I'm calculating the flux of, but the vector field that gave me is x plus 7j plus e to the x plus y plus zk. Okay, which is in the usual notation, what? Zero. Zero comma. x plus 7. x plus 7 comma. E to the. Big ol' e. e to the x plus y plus z. Good, all good with that? Okay, that zero is making me happy or sad? Happy. Happy, happy yeah, because that's exactly. going to make my curl a little bit easier to calculate, right? Mm, yeah. Okay, and then they tell me the surface that I'm trying to integrate over is the rectangle 0, 3 by 0, 2, where z is 0, oriented counterclockwise, viewed from above. Cool, cool. So, that is, let's see, 0, 3, so 1, 2, 3 tick marks in the x. So this guy, by 2 tick marks in the y, that guy, at z is 0, right? So this is the rectangle I'm talking about. Counterclockwise. You guys all see this? Mm -hmm. And we're counterclockwise viewed from above, which... That way? Mm -hmm. so Across the x-axis, down the y-axis. Like this? OK, mm -hmm. and there's some normal vector sticking straight up out of this thing, right? Mm -hmm. Oops. OK, cool, cool. So they told me to use Stokes to calculate this, right? OK. Uh, how do I use Stokes? What does Stokes say? If a bunch of things are true, then... <laughs> <laughs> so let's write Stokes down. Stokes, if things are true, then... Things are also true. The, uh, a closed, um, a closed <laughs> line of f dot with dr equals... Um, an area of curl of f dot of the area. Yeah, so if I'm using bad notation, right, this would be it. And maybe that's actually helpful here, right? Because really, fundamentally, this thing turns surface integrals, right, fluxes into line integrals. That's what Stokes does. Yes, that? Back and forth, yeah. So, Starting off here, I have a flux integral, right? I could calculate the curl of that thing and then parameterize the surface and like actually calculate this, right? Alternatively, I can use Stokes, assuming that things are true, right? So we'll have to figure out whether that's actually accurate. But I can use Stokes to turn this flux integral that I started with into a line integral, line integral which might be easier. Yeah. They told me I had to use Stokes, so I'm going to try it that way. Right? But we could do this the other way. We could parameterize the surface. We could calculate the curl. We could turn the crank on that thing. You guys all cool that? OK, so what are the if things are true? Like, what do I need to check? Yeah, I need to check orientations, right? So I just made them agree. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. They told me something about the orientation of this curve around the outside edge, and I just kind of 
forced it to agree. You guys see that? So I already did that. Cool. Orientations agree. My surface is clearly orientable. Yep. Because I just talked about orientations, right? Okay, what else? What else do I need to have? Yeah, both S I need to have, and C are piecewise smooth. Good. I need to have the surface and its boundary be piecewise smooth. The surface, at least, is super smooth because it's flat, right? And the boundary is close and simple as well. Yeah, so the boundary is the edges of this rectangle, right? So it's in four pieces, which is actually going to make my curve, my line integral, a little bit annoying. You guys all see that? Yes. But maybe it won't be so bad. Okay. So I have piecewise smooth on both things. Then what else do I need? Um, let's see, F is a vector field. Which yeah, I is need a slightly larger open set. Okay, so I need continuity of partial derivatives, and I need to make sure that this curve is closed and kind of reasonable. Is that the same thing as saying smooth, or is that completely different? So smooth is do the do the velocity vectors as you're going around this thing exactly. So something that wouldn't be smooth, something that's made out of infinitely many little broken pieces, like little lines, like a snowflake curve's not smooth, right? This guy's pretty chill, right? Like, this part's smooth. It's not smooth right here at the corner. But we will not be measuring the corner. Will you guys see that? But it's piecewise smooth. Like, it's smooth there, and then it's smooth here, and then it's smooth there, and it's smooth there. And there are four points where it's not smooth. But there are only four. If I had a snowflake curve, there are infinitely many points where it's not smooth. That would be annoying. So a circle? No. That's cool with this? Okay. About the partials. I need to make sure the partials exist and are continuous on a slightly bigger open set. So that means that I'm allowed to have discontinuities like over here at x is 12. Like that would be fine. Or I'm allowed to have discontinuities like down here at z is negative 18. Right? Where do your components of your vector field have discontinuities of their derivatives? I don't see any. Yeah. They don't have any. You guys see that? These two functions are both what we call c infinity, right? You can differentiate to any degree you wish with any combination of variables you wish. And it will always be continuous. Let's pull that. So I'm not worried about that part because they're continuous everywhere. Good, good? Okay. So I check that things are true. So I'm going to hit this with my big hammer. So Stokes says that that is Yeah, it's the same as the line integral. Um, so I can do the integral of C of F dotted with dr, right? Where C is this curve around the outside edge now. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. So uh, how do you calculate a line integral? Yeah, you're going to need to parameterize the pieces, right? Are you going to have one parameterization that's going to cover all four pieces? No, ain't going to happen. So you're going to first break this up. So we're going to do this is the integral over C1 of f dotted with dr plus the integral of C2 of f dotted with dr plus the integral over C3 of f dotted with dr plus the integral over C4 of f dotted with dr. And I forgot some vector hats. All three. And just like that, the sledgehammer broke the area integral into four pieces. Yeah. You guys see this? We hit this with a sledgehammer and shattered into bits and bobs. OK. Now, I need to parameterize, right? So I'm going to call this first one C1, C2, C3, C4, right? Okay. Oh god. So C1, what's your parameterization for C1? 
I'm looking for an R of T, right? What's changing on C1? Is it just T0,0? Not really. Is it just T0,0? Yeah. T, comma, 0, comma, 0, right? You guys all with that? Good to go? Okay, so let's do that integral quick, and then I think we'll pretty quickly see how these go. So, where do my times range? From 0 to 3. Okay. So this is my C1 part, right? I'm thinking. So I got 0 to 3, and then what do I need here? F, or dotted with D, T. How's the line integral work? Second R. So, you need an R prime of T, right? So, what's your R prime? 1, 0, 0. 1, 0, 0. Right? And what goes in the other thing? F of R of T. F of R of T, right? Which is going to be. Zero, 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 something. Yeah, so I'm going to do this one explicitly, even though it's not going to matter, right? You guys see why it's not going to matter? Yeah, because you're dotting it with zeros, right? But this guy should be what? T plus 7. T plus 7. And then this other guy should be E to the T. T. And all told out of this, you are going to get zero. Are we good with that one? Yep. Okay. Thanks. How about C2? You're going to have R of T for C2 is? Zero. No, it's, it's three T zero. Oh, OK. You guys all with that? Right? Because over here, this point right, is three comma zero comma zero. And this point is three comma Well, two. Yeah, the end is two, comma, zero, right? And we're moving. So I need to move from three, zero, zero to three, two, zero, <coughs> increasing t's. You guys all see that? Yeah. Okay, so my C2 part is going to be the integral from zero to two of zero, ten, e to the three plus t. <coughs> 0, 10. Because it's x plus 7 and x is 3. Good. Perfect. x is already 3, right? So this component should be 3 plus 7. And then this guy should be e to the 3 plus t. Is all with that? And then what's your velocity vector along your parameterized curve? 0, 1, 0. 0, 1, 0. So we get 10. So all told, you get the integral from 0 to 2 of 10 d t, which is, which is 20. Cool, yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. All right. How about your C3 parameterization? This is where they get very, very slightly harder. This would be go to 3 n minus t, correct? Yeah. X. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. You guys see that? Yeah. What's up? Oh, I, you can't see this. Oh, yeah, the monitor. You see now? Okay, so my parameterization is going to, where do I want to start this? At 3, 2, 0. At 3, 2, 0, right? Where do I want to end up? At 0, 2, 0. At 0, 2, 0. So what changed in there? Just the x, right? X. Yeah. Okay, so the y coordinate was what the whole time? 2. 2. two. And the z coordinate was? 0. zero. zero. Negative. And then this guy started at 3 and then went to 0, right? So you want 3 minus t there. You guys see that? And then you can go 0 to 3 on the bounds. Yep, and then the bounds will go from 0 to 3. 
You guys see that? If you ran a T in here, so an alternate parameterization would be to put a T in there and, then go from and do 2 comma 0. But then your bounds would run from 3, three to zero. 0. 3 to 0 as opposed to this guy, which is going to run from 0 to 3. You guys see that? So you can pick one. I don't care how you do that. I'm going to run time forwards just because. And this is my C3 curve, right? So we're going from 0 to 3. What's your, what, what was this guy again? It's F of R of T. That's F evaluated at your line, right? Mm -hmm. So that's going to be what? 0, comma. Can we just skip to the fact that the T, the derivative of T is only going to affect the X? Yeah, let's, let's calculate the derivative of R just quick, right? So what's your, what's your velocity vector in there? Negative 1, 0, 0. Negative 1, 0, 0? Mm -hmm. So comma crap it doesn't matter, comma crap it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So what do you get out of this? Zero. Yeah. Zero. Zero. Pretty good with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it seems like we're down to the last one. And you can't see if I write down here, so I'm writing up here, I guess. So C4. Your R of T should be what? Zero, two. I use the two minus T. So zero, then two minus T, then zero. Yeah. Zero, then two minus T, then zero? Yes. The X's are zero in there all the time? Yes. Yep. The Y, the Z's are zero in there all the time? Yes. Yep. And the Y's go from two back to zero? Yes. Cool. All right, so my C4 bit is going to run from 0 to 2, OK? And I got 0, comma, what's your x plus 7 in that? Yep. Uh, just a 7. Because x is 0. Seems like 7. Because x is 0? Mm -hmm. Yep. OK? Then your other bit here? Is the 2 minus t? Um, does, we're going to, yeah, I was going to say, because, yeah, when How about we dot cares? it, yeah. Because when we dot it, it's a 0, negative 1, 0. And so when we calculate our derivative, we get 0, negative 1, 0. Yes. And we're doing the t integration, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to get the integral from 0 to 2 of what? Negative 7 dt. Negative 7 dt, which is? Negative 14. Negative 14. So we got 0 plus 20 plus 0 minus 14, which is? 6. 6. six. Cool. Which tells us what? There's a positive flux. Of yeah, there's a positive flux up. Why up? Yeah, because I needed the orientations to agree, right? You guys see that? And so counterclockwise around the boundary is up on my surface. So the curl in it, the flux of the curl through this surface is six. The heck are the units on it? Um, what are flux units? It's like a Usually, volume, volume, volume per time. In like a real world application, of what would be given as like water per minute or something, right? Sure. Yeah, water like CFS is a is a classic flux integral. Cubic feet per second. So that's that's what people measure rivers in. Right. So you do CFS. Um, other applications might be kilograms of air per hour, like reached out from the building or something. That would be a little bit disturbing, right? That would be like 
if you're if you have a vacuum chamber, right, and you're pumping the air out of it, that might be one of these kind of flux things, mm -hmm. right? Because there's kind of a net loss of air in that. You guys see that? Of course, there's there's other units for flux that sometimes happen, like when you're doing magnetic fields and stuff. There are flux integrals there, and the units there are weird. But you just figure them out, no problem.